Hello everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Iman and today we're going to do some practice problems that relate to chapter one of biology. Hopefully you watched the lecture video first and now we can jump into some practice problems to really dive in to all the content that we've covered and make sure that we understand it. Fantastic. This first problem says all the organisms on your campus make up blank. Is it an ecosystem, a community, a population, or a taxonomic domain? Now, really quickly off the bat, we can cross this out, right? Because we discussed that life, like, uh, we can break life down into three domains, right? We said archaea, bacteria, all right, and eukarya. This is a little bit too general for something like our campus, all right? Now, an ecosystem is a community of the living organisms, such as plants, animals, microbes, along with non-living things, air, water, soil, things like that. What we're talking about here is all the organisms on your campus. So we don't want to answer ecosystem here because they're not asking us about everything on our campus. They're talking about the organisms on campus, the living things. Well, ecosystem consists of living plus non-living. So this would not be the correct answer here, and we can cross that one out. All right. Now, all individuals of the living species within bounds of a particular area are known as a population. All right. So if we were talking about only all the students on campus, we could potentially refer to that as a population. But we're talking about all the organisms. So we're talking about the students on campus. All right, we're talking about all the bacteria on campus. We're talking about some of those viruses on campus. All right, all living organisms on campus. All right, we're, so each one of these can be thought of as a population that resides on campus. But if we're talking about all of these populations together, all these living populations on campus together, all these living organisms on campus, then we want to use the word community to describe that. And so the correct answer here is B. All right, ecosystem consists of living and non-living, so it wasn't correct. All right, population refers to one species, like a human being or a, or a specific type of bacteria. All right, but a campus has many living organisms of many different types of species. So we opt for community because a community is a collection of populations, all right, in an area like your campus. Fantastic. So that is the first question. All right, one is B. Fantastic. Two says, which of the following is a correct sequence of levels in life's hierarchy proceeding downward from an individual animal? All right, so we're proceeding downwards from an organism. Okay, how can we break an organism down? All right, let's read our answer choices here. All right. Okay, organism, then brain, then organ system, then nerve cell. Okay, let's talk about why this is incorrect. All right, Go, going from an organism then to a brain and then organ system, these are equivalent. A brain is an organ system, all right? Well, actually, let me, let me rephrase that. I'm so sorry. It, your brain is part of an organ system. So if you were to write this correctly, I'm sorry for, for misspeaking, you would want to say organism, then organ system, all right? Like your nervous system is an organ system. All right, and, and hey, what is one component of your nervous system, for example, is your brain, all right? And then you can break it down even further to nervous tissue and then finally nerve cell, all right? So this choice A mixes brain and organ system. That's not in the correct order. You go organism, then organ system, then you go organs, then you go tissue, then you go cell. Right? When we discussed, I'm going to scroll back. These are our notes from our lecture. All right. If we go back to our levels, our biological levels of organization, if we're going, if we're starting from organism and moving downwards, all right, or you have organisms. Organisms are made of many organ systems. Organ systems are made of, out of many organs. Organs are made out of many tissues, and tissues are made out of many cells. All right. This first answer can switches the order here all right if it was correct it would be organism then organ system then brain then nerve cell so a is incorrect we can cancel that bad boy out all right let's look at b b says organ system then nervous tissue then brain then nerve cell also again this is this is mixing it up it's organ system all right then it's organ 
which would be the brain, all right? Then it's tissue, which would be the nervous tissue, then the cell, the nerve cell, all right? This mixes up these two right here. This should be the other way around, all right? So B is incorrect as well. What about C? It says organism. Okay, cool. Good start. Organ system. Great. Then tissue, then cell, then organ. All right, we know that organ should be right after organ system, then tissue, then cell. So this is also incorrect. Let's look at that final answer. All right, it says nervous system. Okay, cool. We're starting with an organ system. Then brain. Cool, that's an organ. Fantastic. Then nervous tissue. Good, that's tissue. And then nerve cell. Perfect. This meets the appropriate level of organization from most complicated to least, all right? From most complex to least, all right? So the correct answer for two is D. Fantastic, let's do three. Which of the following is not an observation or an inference on which, on which Darwin's theory of natural selection is based on? Okay, cool, I wanna go back, let's read the four main points of, of of Darwin's theory. It says that individual organisms differ and some of these variations can be inherited. It also says that organisms produce more offspring than can survive, so there's a competition for limited resources. It says individuals best suited to their environment survive and reproduce most successfully. All right, and the most fit organisms pass traits to their offspring and this process of natural selection causes species to change over time. Beautiful. So let's go back to this. Which of the following is not an observation? All right, we're trying to find the wrong answer here out of out of three right answers. OK, so A says poorly adapted individuals never reproduce. Darwin's theory never said that everybody reproduces, can reproduce. But those with the most. Those with the traits that allow them to survive best in their environment are more successful, all right? And those traits are those that are carried down, all right? So this is not correct. Individuals can produce, uh, poorly adapted individuals can reproduce, but usually, all right, what happens is they don't survive in a competitive environment where there are others that are more suited to survive such conditions or environments, all right? B, okay, so we already know our answer is A, but we can go through these. There is a heritable variation among individuals. That's definitely true, right? We're all, although we're very similar, we do have our own differences. Over, uh, because of overproduction of offspring, there is a competition for limited resources. We just read that. That is correct. All right, and a population can become adapted to its environment over time. Correct. Survival of the fittest, all right, with those traits that help survive in, in a population, in an environment, right? absolutely correct so the correct answer here is a all right darwin's theory does not say that poorly individuals can never produce offspring uh just a future hint all right for trying to answer questions in an exam or or anything whenever you have a a, a problem that asks you to find an answer choice that is to find an answer choice out of four that's not correct all right Ones that use things like never, all right, absolutes, all right, whatever, answer choices that use these words that are absolutes, be cautious of those. Use, those are usually indicative of, uh, of an an, the correct answer, right? Because you can usually never make such big absolute statements like this, and they're usually the wrong statements, all right? So if you're asked which of the following is not correct, if there's an answer choice that makes a very absolute statement that says something like never or always, okay? That could be the answer, all right? And it usually is. Of course, be cautious and steady so you, you know how to answer uh, uh, appropriately, but this is a good kind of like question attempt hack. Cool, four says, four asks, systems biology is mainly an attempt to blank, all right? Systems biology is mainly an attempt to model the dynamic behavior of, a to of, of total biological systems. All right? It mainly depends on a study of the interaction among the system's parts. It is a mixture of components which function together, and it is mainly related to study of all levels of life. All right? So systems biology is mainly an attempt to understand the behavior of the entire biological system. How? by studying the interaction of the parts. So the correct answer here is C. All 
all right? It's not to analyze genomes or your genes from different species, all right? That's gene, uh, 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 genomics, all right? That's the study of genomes is genomics, all right? Study of proteins, uh, proteomics, all right? Simplify complex problems by reducing the system into smaller, less complex units, all right? That's reductionism, all right? Systems biology is an attempt to in understand behavior of an entire biological system. All right, by studying interaction. So you can think of as it, uh, uh, of it as, you know, the components of the parts and studying all those, all right? Build high throughput machines for rapid acquisition and biological data, all right? That's more like instrumentation, all right? So systems biology is an attempt to understand the behavior of entire biological systems by studying interactions among component parts. Beautiful, so four is C. Let's move on to five. Five says, protists and bacteria are grouped into different domains because blank, all right? Bacteria come under prokaryotes, all right? Because bacterial DNA is not separated from the remaining cells by a membrane-bound nucleus. The thing with protists is they do have a membrane-bound nucleus, so they actually are ca categorized as eukaryotes, all right? And if you remember, bacteria, uh, the, the, the domain bacteria and archaea are both, are both uh, domains that consist of prokaryotes, whereas eukarya is the domain that consists of eukaryotes, all right? And so protists and bacteria are grouped into different domains, right? Mostly because protists are eukaryotes, they contain a membrane-bound nucleus, Whereas bacteria are prokaryotes, they do not contain a membrane-bound nucleus. So the correct answer here is C. Protists have a membrane-bound nucleus, which is why they're not categorized with bacteria, which do not have a membrane-bound nucleus. All right, the other are really not answers. Protists eat bacteria is not the answer we're looking for. Bacteria are not made out of cells. That's so incorrect. They are made out of cells, all right, just prokaryotic cells. All right, different cells. And that's why answer choice C is, is the correct one. It, it elaborates on that properly. Proteus are photosynthetic. Well, bacteria can also be photosynthetic. All right, so the correct answer here is C. Six says, which of the following best demonstrates the unity among all organisms? Well, if you remember, we talked a bit about information systems. All right, DNA is a substance, all right, is, is a substance that consists of genes, all right, it's present in all organisms, it transfers the units of inheritance from parents to offsprings, all right, and the development and main, maintenance of, of organisms is controlled by your DNA, by your genetics. Now, the structure of DNA has the capability to store information, and the genes of DNA control things like the synthesis of proteins, all right, the structure and function of DNA is what best demonstrates the unity among all organisms. And so in an attempt to answer this question, you want to look for something like that. All right. Which one of these answers touches on the fact um, on DNA, on the passing and exchanging of, of genes? All right. That's going to be answer choice C. All right. This is what demonstrates the unity among all organisms. What, what is is overlapping in regards to organisms. Fantastic. Seven says a controlled experiment is one that is blank. So this is just a definition statement, all right? A controlled experiment is one where you test the experimental and the control group at the same time so that you can compare, all right, the results of both to make any conclusions. So controlled experiment means that the scientist controls the in experimental environment to remain um, where everything remains constant except the variable that they, they want to explore, all right? It mainly reveals the effects of just one variable by testing control and experimental groups which differ in that one variable, all right? For example, if you're, if, if you're, if the study, if you're having a study that investigates uh, mim mimics uh, in snake populations, all right, it's going to be mainly designed to compare test experiments and, and those control groups in parallel, all right? And so a controlled group is one that tests experimental and control groups 
in parallel in parallel um proceed slowly enough that scientists can make careful records of the results that's just an outrageous answer is repeated many times to make sure the results are accurate all experiments have to be replicated this is not unique to controlled experiments this is for all experimentation you must repeat all right uh controlled experiment so that's not correct c is incorrect keeps all variables constant if you're keeping all variables constant you're not doing an experiment okay you have to vary one variable so that you can actually run an experiment to see the effects of changing that um, variable fantastic eight Eight asks, which of the following statements best distinguishes hypotheses from theories in science? Okay, this is so important to understand the difference. All right, in science, theory has a much more broad scope than a hypothesis. A hypothesis is a tentative answer to a question. It has a narrow scope. It is a prediction that you can then carry out through experimentation. Theory, on the other hand, generates new hypotheses that's, and, and it's a, a much broader thing. And sometimes they have broad explanatory power. Theories are sometimes hard to prove. There's many aspects that go on to theories. For example, you know, Darwin's theory of evolution, all right, or Einstein's theory of relativity. Okay, these are things that are much more broad than a hypothesis. And I guess the best way to define a theory is, is a, a rationale type. It's a carefully thought out explanation for observations of the natural world that has been constructed using the scientific method. And it brings together many facts and many hypotheses. So it's this broader realm of facts and hypotheses about some observation of the natural world. All right. And so what that means is hypotheses are relatively narrow in, in scope because hypotheses attempt to answer one question. Theory tends to form a framework, all right, to explain observation of the natural world that involves facts, that involves hypotheses, all right, and it is much broader in scope. It's an explanation of, 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 of an aspect. It incorporates facts, hypotheses, even laws, all right? So the correct answer here is C. Let me go through the, answer, uh, the other answers as well. Theories are hypotheses that have been proved incorrect. That's a law, by the way. A law is a hypothesis that's been proved, all right? Like Newton's laws of motions. All right. Hypotheses are guesses. OK. Theories are correct answers. Not necessarily. All right. That's the difference between a law and a theory. A law is a hypothesis that has been proved. A theory is more of a framework or a well substantiated explanation of an aspect of our natural world that incorporates laws. It incorporates facts, but it also incorporates hypotheses that haven't been tested yet because of either, you know, it's difficult. There's limitations in our technology etc all right so that's also not correct a and b are incorrect d says theories are proved true again this idea that theories are true that's not correct theories are not 100 percent true all right that would be a law okay and how hypotheses are often contradicted by results in experiments not true sometimes your hypotheses are correct sometimes they're not so this answer choice is also incorrect so a the correct answer is c Hypotheses are usually relatively narrow in scope because they're attempting to answer one question. Theories have a broad ex uh, ex uh, explanation power, right? Because they're trying to really provide, provide an explanation for a, a, a substantial part of our, our natural world, an observation of the natural world that contains many aspects. All right. Fantastic. Now for nine. Nine says, which of the following is an example of qualitative data? The fish swam in a zigzag motion. The contents of the stomach are mixed every 20 seconds. The temperature degree, uh, decreased from 20 to 15. Six pairs of robins hatched an average of three, uh, of three chicks each. All right, so this, is, this problem 
um, is, is really important because it requires us um, to define what qualitative data is, all right? Qualitative data refers to any information. Uh, qualitative data, okay, let me rephrase. Qualitative data is descriptive in nature. It's expressed in terms of language rather than numerical values. Quantitative data refers to any information that can actually be quantified, counted, or measured. So if we're looking at these answer choices, all right, B, the contents of a stomach are mixed every 20 seconds. That is quantified, counted, or measured. That is not qualitative data. Temperature decreased from 20 to 15. You're measuring something here, all right? It's counted and measured. This is quantitative, all right? quantitative data, all right? This temperature is also quantitative data. And the six pairs of robin hatched on average of three chicks, that's again something that's quantified, it's measured. So it is quantitative data and not qualitative. The only qualitative data is the fish swam in a zigzag motion. So the correct answer here is A, all right? And last but not least, 10 asks, which of the following best describes the logic of scientific inquiry? All right, let's read our answer cho choices. A says, if I generate a testable hypothesis, tests and observations will support it. This is not always necessarily true, all right? Your hypothesis might be incorrect, and then you have to reanalyze what kind of questions to ask, all right? Reevaluate your hypothesis and create a whole new set of experiments to move about, all right? Sometimes your hypotheses are incorrect, and that's okay, all right? But this answer choice is completely wrong. B says, if my prediction is correct, it will lead to a testable hypothesis, all right? Before you even you know, conduct an experiment, you formulate a hypothesis. That's part of the scientific method we covered in our lecture. All right, you first have a question that you ask. Then you do background information to create a testable hypothesis. Then you test it to see if the prediction is correct or not. All right, so this has it in the wrong order. C says, if my observations are accurate, they're gonna support my hypothesis, all right? If your observations are accurate, they could or could not support your hypothesis. This is something that you formulated before you ran the experiment. It could be correct, it could be incorrect, and that's okay either way, but that's an incorrect statement. D says, if my hypothesis is correct, I can expect certain test results. This is absolutely correct. All right, so the answer choice here for 10 is going to be D. All right. That's all I have for you guys. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Other than that, good luck, happy studying, and have a beautiful day.